So our next topic, we are going to be looking at uh, production. Since we've taken an uh, introduction for economics, let's look at uh, the concept, the concept of production. Yes, like I said earlier, I said the topics I'm going to be taking, they are topics that questions do come out, or questions are extracted and given to students in our exams. So you cannot do without these questions in the exams. Since I was born, and now I'm getting old, I have never seen any economics exam. Check your past questions very well. You will always see questions coming out from this area. And that's the major reason why I'm taking my time to go through these topics so that the students will have a comprehensive knowledge about these topics. Looking at the concept of production, Production, we say, can simply be defined as the changing or transformation of raw materials into finished goods. Yes, this is just like an anthem. Many of us have been taught in our various um, schools. Now, when we say production is the changing or transformation of raw materials into finished goods, one question that needs to be asked, what do we call raw materials? And what we call finished goods. Raw materials are those materials that are yet to be touched, they are untouched. They came from their natural what we saw, they came from their natural source. So they have to be changed or transformed before they can be used. You cannot use raw materials. You can't consume them except they have been what transformed. That's why that definition is seen as an anthem. Even a day old child understands that production is the changing and transformation of raw materials into what? Finished goods. Changing or transformation of raw materials into what? Finished goods. So, why do we say this? Production is not complete until when these raw materials extracted from their natural source, sources are changed or transformed into what? Finished goods. Importance of production. One, production makes goods and services available. Production makes goods, makes goods and services available. Production makes goods and services available for human consumption. For human consumption. How do I mean by this? When the raw materials extracted from your natural sources are transformed, then goods and services are made what? Available for human consumption and what? Satisfaction. One important thing. Two, production creates job opportunities. Production creates job opportunities. Creates job opportunities. I was in the class and I was asking this question. How does production create job opportunities? Some of the students, they were so mute because they were confused. You don't need to be confused about this. Production creates job opportunities. Remember, 95% of production is carried out in an industry or industries rather. If an industry is cited in a place, with the aim of producing a particular product, then many hands or labor or workers will be needed. If these people are what are engaged in these production processes, at the end of the day, they will be paid for the services they have rendered. That's why we say production creates job opportunities. Three, three, production. Production encourages, production encourages exportation, production encourages exportation of goods, production encourages exportation of goods. When a country embraces production or producing goods that is needed or that are needed in other countries, 
Such is called what? Exportation. Because these goods will be taken from that country to other countries. And what positive effect does it have to such country? When a country exports goods which are internally produced in that country to other countries, it helps to increase the country's what? National income. It helps to increase the country's national income because the country will be making much money, not only from the production of domestic goods, but at the same time, they will also make money for exporting these goods that were domestically produced in such countries. So production encourages for exportation of goods for production brings about Production brings about even development, even development and growth, even development and growth to an economy, to an economy, even development and growth to an economy. When I use the word even, I'm talking about a drastic change. There are some countries today. They don't have what it takes to produce. So for that reason, they import virtually everything they needed. And such country is bound to remain poor because they'll be spending more when they import. For a country that has what it takes to produce and take to other countries, such country is bound to be developed. Because proceeds from what is gotten from that production will be used for other purposes, such as probably building of roads, talking about infrastructural facilities, and many others. Then five, five, production, production encourages, production encourages, Locally, locally produced goods. Locally produced goods. Yes, when I use one locally produced goods, don't get it twisted, it's not confusing. There are some goods that are locally produced. It might not necessarily need the use of machine. Just use something like manual, and we use them here. Though we might not be able to take such goods to other countries because they might not fancy it. Like here in Nigeria, we do have some locally produced goods such as black soap. I think that black soap now, I think they have even modernized in such a way that it's been packed. They call it uh, dudu or shum or something like that. Some persons call it oshedudu. And somebody was asking, what's the, what's the, uh, what's the, I mean, this black soap, how effective it is? I mean, how effective is it compared to other type of soap that we've been using? Now, the black soap is very, very effective in a way that it has some kind of local contents that are used to produce it. It might not be having that perfume when it is used, but it is effective in such a way that it helps to make our body look so neat. It even helps to eliminate what we call body odor. Most persons today, I mean, most persons today that uses this soap that, is, that has perfume, this uh, foreign soap and all that, they still have body odor. But this local soap that we're talking about is effective because the content of that soap is mainly what traditional. It's just like this our ago that we use for malaria. Up to today, you know that there are some people that don't believe that this agro works effectively for malaria. There are even some, uh, these are our English drugs, whatever. For example, when I was growing up, I never believed so much in that agro because number one, it is bitter. Two, it looks so odd. Why growing up? There was a time I had this uh, type of fever, whatever. I was admitted in the hospital for like one week. I was discharged. 
After three days, this sickness still, this illness still persists. So somebody advised that I should get a go. So I got this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, roots and all that. Gather them in the pot, cook them. When it was done, I had to drink the water. I covered myself again with the blankets. He held it while it was hot. I even used part of it to even take my bath. Within a space of two days, I was okay. So that was where I believed too well that there is power in our local, uh, local uh, goods that we use. Locally made goods. Because they are traditional in nature. They are traditional in nature. So away from this, we are going to be looking at stages of production. Stages of production. Stages of production. Quickly. Production is divided into three stages. Production is divided into what? Three stages. We have one. We have the primary stage. The primary stage. Primary stage. Two, we have a second stage. Second stage. Three, we have the tertiary stage. Tertiary stage. Now, I know we must have been taught something like this. But most of us do not understand the differences. So we're going to explain that quickly now. The primary stage of production is concerned with the extraction of raw materials from their natural sources. I repeat, the extraction of raw materials, to extract means to get the extraction of raw materials from their natural source. And every raw material is either gotten from the land, sea, or forest. What am I saying? So every raw material is either gotten from the land, sea, or what? Forest. Primary stage. The extraction of raw materials from their natural sources. It could be land, it could be sea, it could be what? Forest. Now when these raw materials are extracted, they are not just extracted for fancy, they are extracted for a purpose. They are extracted and set to be taken to the industries where they will be what? put into use. Where they will be useful. They have to be, they have to be transformed or changed. Why the secondary stage, which is the second one, is that stage that is concerned with the changing or transformation of these extracted raw materials into finished goods. I repeat, the secondary stage is concerned with the changing or transformation of raw materials into what finished goods. You can see how it works. The first one has to do with extraction of raw materials from their natural sources. Then after that stage, move on to the next stage. The next stage is what the second stage. Where this extracted raw material will be put into use. You take them to the factory or the industries where they are needed. Where we have to change them through the use of machines or probably manuals too. Extraction of raw materials into what? Finished goods. Then the last stage, which is the tertiary stage, has to do with, or it deals with, Taking these finished goods to where they are needed. Talk about markets. After these goods have been what manufactured, after the goods must have been completed, they have to be taken to where they are needed. Through what? Distribution, marketing, sales. So that is the tertiary what? stage. So stages of production, we have the primary stage, secondary stage, and what? The tertiary stage. So away from that, we look at uh, factors of production. Wait a Factors of production. Factors of production. Factors of production. Factors of production. The factors of production divided into one, we have land, two, we have labor, three, we have capital. 
before we have entrepreneur. Yes. Trust me, I believe these factors written on the board are not something that are new to us. Land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur. Now these four factors we have on the board must be combined in production processes before production is said to be what to be complete. If they are not combined, the production is not complete. What am I going to make you understand? That if these four factors have to be put into use for a particular product or commodity to be complete, to be set for use. Now when we talk about land, we say land is a free gift of nature. Land is a free gift of nature because it's from God. It's natural. In the geographical definition, we are also made to understand that land is a solid part of the earth's surface. Why do we say land is a solid part of the earth's surface? Because the land can accommodate things, heavy goods like building, machineries, and what have you. It is fixed in supply. It is immobile. It cannot be moved from one place to another. All these factors have their economic uses. On most times, they will tell you they have their rewards. If you don't call them rewards, you call it they have their economic uses. The economic uses of land is rent. Or the reward for land is what? Rent. The reward for land is rent. The next one is labor. Labor is simply the total amount of effort. Labor is simply the total amount of effort, either physically or mentally, put together, I and mean put by an individual, rather. Either physically or mentally, put by an individual or a person in doing a particular kind of job. This is what I'm trying to say. Physically or mentally. Physically or mentally put by an individual in doing a particular kind of job. So we are trying to make you understand something that labor could be physically what exhibited or mentally exhibited. When labor is physically exhibited or showcased, it means strength and energy is required. Strength, strength. And energy is what is required. Now you see some of these, um, all these um, other people, other malams, uh, let's call them malams, that digs the street. Probably they want to pass a pipe. You see some of them on the streets. They will pull their shirt because they understand too well that they needed strength to carry out that because they will be sweating profusely. They will dig from morning to night. That type of labor exhibits physical world strength and energy. What about mental efforts? Mental effort has to do with skills. Just like as I'm teaching, though I might be applying a bit of energy, but it cannot be compared to that person digging the ground where they have to pass pipe. Mental effort has to do with skills. Knowledge, what one has been taught in a particular school or a place of learning. Doctor, teacher, pilot, engineer, nurses, they all apply mental efforts. So the economic uses or reward for labor is wages and their salaries. Wages and salaries. Wages are that amount, the income rather, that labor collects on daily basis, weekly, or a fortnight. How many days make a fortnight? Two weeks, that's 14 days. Why salaries and incomes, labor end at the end of 30 days or a month. Then the third one is capital. 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 Capital is man-made wealth. 
man-made wealth. Capital is man-made wealth. It is not natural. Man-made wealth. It is further defined as a substantial amount of money kept by an individual or a person for future use. I repeat, capital is man-made wealth. It is also further defined as what the substantial amount of money kept by an individual or person for future use. Capital. Its economic uses is what? Its economic uses is uh, interest. Don't forget, these ones are very, very important. Can I escape this in the exam? You can ask you. Its economic uses is what? Interest. The word for capital is what? Interest. Then the last one here is entrepreneur. This factor of production is said to be the most important factor of production. Why is it the most important factor of production? Because the entrepreneur is an individual or a person who coordinates all other factors of production. Without this man here, these other three factors will be rendered useless. These other three factors will be rendered what? Useless. So the entrepreneur is said to be what? the most important factor of production because it coordinates all other factors of production. What do I mean by this? The entrepreneur sought for land if he wants to embark or if he wants to engage himself in production. Sought for land where he has to work site and industry. He sought for people that will work because he alone cannot do the job alone. That's why we have the idea of um, the concept of division of labor that was propounded by the popular Adam Smith, who is said to be the father of what? Economics. Thank God today, that man's concept is what we are still using. If not for that concept, many of us will find it so difficult to increase our output. And if our output is not increased, then we all will be earning lesser worth incomes or lesser profits. The entrepreneur being the most important factor of production because it coordinates the land, labor, capital. Its economic uses is profits. Its economic uses is what? Profit. I see some times they will tell you the economic uses or reward for entrepreneurs is profit and loss. I do not believe in this uh, concept anymore. Because there is no businessman or an entrepreneur who wants to go into business with the mind of making a loss. Even if you are going to make a loss, it shouldn't be something that you have to start thinking. If the loss is going to come, it comes by accident, traveling by your own mistake. Not, because, not when you want to go into a business. You should not be thinking of you making a loss. The mindset should be, I want to make profit. That's why they say the essence of starting up a business is to make what? Profit. So the economic uses or reward for entrepreneur is what? Is profit. Not when you say profit and loss or profit and loss. No, I don't believe in that anymore. Just say profit. If in the long run this man makes a loss, then he should hold himself responsible for that. But if he's going into business, his mindset will not talk about making a loss, but rather he should be talking about what? Profits. So that is that. I believe with this, is there any question? If you don't have any question, we can still continue. So we said the factors of production are what? Land, labor, capital, and then entrepreneur. We also talked about the stages of production. We talked about the primary stage, the secondary stage, and the tertiary stage. We talk about the importance of production. When we say production makes goods and services available for what? For human what? Consumption and satisfaction. Production also encourages what? Locally made goods. Production encourages exploitation. Production creates job opportunities. Production brings about even development and growth to an economy. All these are what we discuss on the importance of their production. So at this point, if we don't have any question, we move on to the next topic. Move on to the next uh, topic. Thank you.